One of the most fundamental data structures in JavaScript is an array. And as a developer, it doesn't matter what framework you use, whether it's Angular, React, Vue, or even a backend framework like Express.js. I don't even think I need to mention how frequently arrays are used while building our apps. Therefore, it's very crucial to know how to write efficient and optimized code using it. And that is why in this video, we will first cover the basics of arrays, including how to declare, initialize, and manipulate arrays in JavaScript. And then we'll go on to discuss different array methods such as push, pop, shift, unshift, concat, and many, many more, and how they can be used to modify arrays efficiently. We'll also explore concepts like array indexing and array traversal technique, and then we'll solve some of the most commonly asked data structure questions using these techniques related to arrays in our DSA interviews. All right, so the first thing that we need to know is how to declare an array. How can you create an array in JavaScript? So there are actually two ways. First one can be, let's say if I declare a variable called ARR and I'm gonna say new array. And this is how you declare an array. But there's a much easier way to do it. Instead of this, I'm just gonna say two square brackets. This is the most easiest and the most commonly used way to declare an array. Now that we have declared an array, how do we add something to it? So one of the ways is if you are creating an array, you can directly add something like apple, banana, cherry, something like that. Or there's another way where you can add an element to the end of the array or to the top of the array, which, um, which we're gonna see in just a moment. But let's see when we have added these elements inside of the array, how can we access them? So to access them, we're just gonna take the array and let's just console log array and let's say if you want to access the first element we're going to say array of zero and that's it let me just run this file node array basics.js yep you can see we have printed apple over here similarly if you want to access the second element so the indexing in an array starts from zero and then zero one two and so on so that is why we've written array of zero to access the first element now to access the second element we can similarly write array of one and run this again and there you go, we have the banana over here. Now you might be thinking, okay, we have added the strings over here, right? But what else can we add inside of the array? And that is the most beautiful thing about the array. It can store any data type, like any data type in this world that you can think of, including objects as well. So let's say if we have created an object over here, let person, and I'm gonna give this a name property, Piyush and I'm gonna give this an age. And now what we can do, we can just take this object and we can add it inside of this array. As simple as that. Now to access this, so it's zero, one, two, three, it's in the third index. So I'm just gonna say array of three and just run it again. And there you go, we got this object printed over here. And also if you want to access, let's say a specific property in that object, let's for example, name. So I'm just gonna say dot name. And now if I run this, we get my name over here, that is Piyush. Cool, so let's say if we have an array and we don't know how many elements are inside of this array, how are we gonna know it? So we have a property called length property. So dot length. And now if we run this, you're gonna see it will give us four. So in this case, in case of length, it doesn't consider zero as the first index. It will just give us the number of elements inside of the array. It's only while we are accessing it that the index are starting from zero. So in case of length, it's gonna give us four. Now let's talk about different methods that are used to add and remove the elements from an array. So push and pop are one of the most commonly used methods when it comes to adding and removing the elements at the end of the array. And shift and unshift are used when it comes to adding and removing the elements from the top of the array. So let's see all of these. So we're gonna use our same array from before, arr dot push orange and now let's see what do we have inside of this array so i'm just going to console log of this array let me just comment this if i run this you're going to see we have this array with the orange added to the end of the array but now if we want to remove an element from an array we're going to use array dot pop we don't need to provide it anything it's just going to remove the last element from the array so let's say if i want to remove two elements so it should not have this object and this uh, last element as well. So now if I just console log it over here and run this, you're gonna see we get apple, banana, and cherry. 
it has removed the last two elements from the array. So this is the usage of pop. Now let's understand shift and unshift. But before moving to shift and unshift, I would like to ask you a question. Why did the JavaScript array skip its workout? Pause this video and write your answer in the comments down below right now. Okay, I hope you have written your answer. It's because it was tired of doing too many push-ups. You know, pu push because it has push method. No? Okay. Never mind, I'll, I'll move forward. Okay, now to add an element to the top of the array, I'm just going to copy this line and add to the top of the array. And I'm going to say unshift. And now you're going to see if I run this, nothing happened. Oh, my bad, because console log was over here. I'm supposed to put it over here. Now if I run this, yep, you see, orange has been added at the top of the array. It has become the first element. Now if I want to remove this, similar to pop, I'm just going to say shift and now if I run this, you're going to see the orange will be removed now. Yep, you see orange is gone from the first element. Cool. So that was shift and unshift. But I would like to mention one thing that there's one thing to note over here that push and pop are more performant than shift and unshift. So if you're working on a large arrays, it's essential to consider the performance while deciding which method to use. Now let's talk about the more interesting part about the arrays loops so first of all let's talk about the basic loops that we have which are common in most of the other programming language as well that is for loop and while loop so if i have an array which i already did over here arr so i'm just going to use this one so if i say for and i'm going to take index i of zero let me just remove this so we're going to start from index zero and we're going to go to array dot length which is going to be i don't know three in this case and i plus plus so now i'm going to console log over here and i'm just going to say arr of i so what it's going to do now it's going to provide it different value of i in each loop so first i will be zero so it will print array of zero that is apple then banana then cherry so if i run this you're going to see we get all of these three items. So what this does is it provides us one single element from the array and then we can perform any operation that we want on that particular item. Now, similarly, there's while loop as well. So we can write let i equal zero and write while over here and we can write condition which is uh, which is in our case if i is less than array of length, if it becomes more than array of length, it's going to break this while loop else it's going to keep running. And I'm going to write I plus plus at the end of this. And we can write our condition over here, which is console log. So now if I try to run this, yep, we get the same output. Okay, so those were for and while loop. But let's talk about the inbuilt loops that are provided to us by JavaScript, which are much, much more powerful. So I'm going to take a new array over here, const numbers, and I'm just going to provide it some basic elements. And now let's talk about map first. So if I say numbers dot map, so let's see, we have the definition over here. So it calls a defined callback function on each element of an array and returns an array that contains the result, right? So what does that mean? So this map takes a callback. What is a callback? This thing, an anonymous function. This thing is called a callback. If you don't know much about this, much about JavaScript functions, I would highly recommend to watch this video that I've made on JavaScript functions basics. So you can either write it like this or you can write it like this. Either ways works. I'm just gonna revert it back to arrow function. This is much more clean. So inside of this callback, it takes few things. First is the item. Second is the index. And the third is the actual array. So now if I try to console log all of these things, item, index, and array, you're going to see it goes through each of the item of this array that we have declared over here. So I'm just going to run this now. Yep, you see, it's the first item that is one and the index number, which is zeroth index and the actual array over here. Now we don't need to console log this over here because this returns us an entirely new array from this map. So if I write const new nums and then we can perform any operation on any of these items. So if I let's say return item 
plus 5. So what this will do is it will add 5 to each and every element of this array. So now if I run this, you're going to see we have all of these elements with 5 added to it. But you see it gives us such a clean syntax when it compares to for and while loop. Now similarly there is another function which is filter. Filter. Let me just, uh, just remove this all together. Yeah. So filter also works exactly the same as map. The only difference is that it takes a condition inside of it and will return only those elements that satisfy that condition. Let's see what I mean by that. So if I say return and I'm going to say item. If item is more than let's say 3, only then return them. So this will also return us a new array in new nums. So if I try to run this, you can see the only items that are more than 3 are 4 and 5. So that's why it returned us a new array with 4 and 5 elements. Now similarly, we have another function which is reduce. Now reduce is a very important function. So I would need your attention right now. Now reduce not only takes these three things, it takes four things. So first is an item. Second is no, so first is the accumulator. That is the previous value. I'm just going to write it previous. The item, then the index and the array, which we're not going to use both of these. So I'm just going to remove them. So these two are main, like previous item and the current item. So now if we have all of these numbers over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to sum all of these numbers. So what reduce does is reduce takes an array and it reduces it down to just one value. So if I have this array numbers, so the previous value, where does this previous value comes from? So this previous value is this first index, but it go, it's going to be first index if we don't provide it any initial value. So let's say in this case, I provided it initial value of zero. So it will be zero by default. So now if I say return previous plus item. So what this will do is it will say zero plus this first index and then it will return us. And then now the new value of previous will be one. Now in the second iteration, it will be one plus two and so on. It will add this complete array. So I'm just going to say sum over here. And if I console log this, you're going to see we get 15 over here. That is the sum of all of this. But if we provide the initial value as two, you're going to see we get 17. Yep. Just like that. So this is how reduce works. So I've actually created a much in-depth video on map filter and reduce. If you want to check that out, click the link in the description down below or I button above. Now the next method is sum. So what is this? Let me just uh, copy this and paste it over here. Now sum is quite similar to filter, but the thing is when we have applied the condition in filter, it's going to return every single item that satisfies that condition. But in the case of sum, it's going to return either true or false. So if I write uh, result and I'm just going to console log this. So if there's any element that is more than three, it's going to return true. Just like that. There's another similar function called every. Now, as the name suggests, every check for every single element, if that condition is satisfied with it. So if every single element is more than three, then it's going to return true, else it's going to return false. So obviously you guessed it right, it's going to return false because not every element inside of this array is more than three. So if I let's say, say if it's every item is less than 10, which it is, so this should return us true. Yep, just like that. Now next, I'm going to discuss one more looping function in JavaScript when it comes to arrays. So next one is find. So as it says over here, returns the value of the first element in the array where the predicate is true and undefined otherwise. Okay, so if it satisfies this condition, so if I say more than three, so it's going to return us that particular element to us. If I run this. So you see, uh, which first item that was more than three? It was four. So it returned us four. But if let's say there is no item that is more than six, right? So it's going to return us undefined. So this is how find works. And all of these looping methods, the inbuilt looping methods in JavaScript are going to help us massively while writing algorithms in JavaScript. Now let's talk about spread and rest operators. These are very important operators when it comes to arrays. Let me show you why. So if I have an array called numbers, Let's just take our previous array. That is uh, this one. 
gonna take and paste it over here and just call it nums and if i say if it's one two three and i'm gonna take these two elements i'm gonna define another element uh, sorry array with four five and six and seven let's say now if we want to create a third element let's say find num oh, sorry final nums and if we want to copy both of these values inside of this final nums what do you think how will we do it so we can copy can we copy it like this like nums and nums two will will this work let's see so let's see now hmm so it's giving us this separate arrays so there has to be some way to just remove these arrays and just put these elements inside of this final nums this and then after that this so yeah there is one method we can use for loop and we can loop through both of these and you know systematically add one by one each element to this final nums but that that is going to be such a lengthy task so instead of that what we're going to do we're going to use spread operator and the spread operator are these three dots so i'm going to put three dots over here and three dots over here and that's it so now if you try to run this you're going to see we have all of this array elements inside of the one final array earlier we were getting two different arrays but now we have one final array for this now what is the rest operator so rest operator is exactly the same as a spread operator the only difference is when we use it inside of a function let's say if we have a function called sum and it takes numbers and it just returns that the those numbers that's it and i'm just going to call this sum over here so let's say we have a function like this sum and it's supposed to take a lot of numbers and in the input we are supposed to provide these nums like this nums and nums two but we don't know how many arrays are going to be provided to us so how do we receive all of these elements in form of a one single array so what we will simply do is we will say first let me just show you what happens and see it just took this one the first nums and it didn't it just completely ignored this nums too so but if we just do this this is called the rest operator and it will take all of these params now so now if i run this you're gonna see it took the first param and then it took the second param and if we had something else as well let's say five or in even a string as well hello let me try to run this yep you see it took all of these params in form of this one big variable that is numbers over here and we can access these through this numbers variable all right now let's discuss some more important array methods that are going to be useful for us while writing our algorithms the first one is concat and you might have heard of this function if you're coming from some other programming language let me just show you how this works i'm just going to take uh, you know i'm just going to use this nums so we have nums already and we have this nums too let's say if we want to join both of these uh, arrays let's say if we want to add all of this what we have inside of nums2 inside of nums1 as well so what we can do is we can say just nums dot concat and you're going to see what does this say it combines two or more arrays this method returns a new array without modifying the existing array so if i say this and i write nums2 over here it's going to return us a new array so new array and if i try to run this now let me just comment this one first yeah now if i try to run this you're gonna see we get this entirely new array in which it this has added this nums2 as well now if we were to add some other array in this let's take this uh, our original arr so i'm just gonna say comma arr and now if i try to run this you're gonna see we have more items inside of this area so this is the power of this concat function and this is going to be very helpful for us while writing the algorithms now the next function is slice so how does slice works so if i take this first of all let's understand what slice is exactly so let's say if we have an array and we want to access a certain part of that array or certain number so let's say if we have this arr and if we want to just print the first two elements from this array what we can do is we can say arr dot slice and let's see what does it say it takes two things first the start index and then the end index 
so it returns a copy of a section of an array for both start and n and negative index can be used to okay I'll, I'll show you the negative index afterwards so if i just write oops not splice it's slice so zero comma two let's see what do we get we get apple and banana earlier what was it so before console logging it it was apple banana and cherry so it returned us the zeroth index and the first index and it didn't return as the second index so that is what exactly it does it will include the first index in the output and it will reject the end index so if it's starting from zero it will take zero up until n minus one that n in this case is two so it will go to two minus one that is one so apple and banana and we can also do something like this let's say minus one so what is minus one minus one is basically the element from the last like minus one so if it was minus two it would have been banana it's minus one so that's the first element from the end of the array if it was minus two so it would have been banana and cherry so let me show you and now if i run this yep you see banana and cherry so this is what slice is and trust me this is a super helpful function when it comes to data structures in javascript and again, I'm going to discuss another super helpful function to you, which is splice, which is often overlooked while creating, I mean, while writing algorithms in JavaScript. And say, arr dot splice. Okay, what is this splice? Let's see. So it removes an element from an array and if necessary, inserts new elements in their place, returning the deleted elements. Okay, it takes three things. First is the start position, then how many elements we are supposed to delete and it returns the array containing the elements that were deleted. Also it takes uh, a third value as well that is all of the elements that we are supposed to add in the array. So let me show you just, I'm just talking too much, let me just show you first. So we had this apple banana cherry right, I'm gonna say I want to start at this first index that is from banana and I want to delete two elements banana and cherry so i'm gonna say delete two elements and at the same place i want to add orange so you're gonna see it's gonna get rid of banana and cherry and it's gonna add the orange to it so it's not supposed to you know return an array because it does it in place so if we do this it's going to make changes to the original array that is arr so if i try to do this now you're gonna see it removed two elements from the top that is from the index one banana and cherry and it added orange to it so this is how splice works all right next i'm going to discuss fill function what fill basically does is it takes an array let's say const dummy array or let's let's just use our previous nums array which is this one i'm going to use this array so i'm going to take this and say nums dot fill and what it's basically going to do is it's going to replace everything inside of that array with whatever that's provided inside between these brackets over here so now if i try to console log this you know i should have created a new array instead of just destroying that array so if i have a dummy array of and i'm just gonna use this dummy array and now if i run this yeah you see it removed every element from that array and just replaced it with zero now it takes another thing so if it is just the value it's going to replace every single element in that array but if it provided the start index let's say if i provide start from second index so now notice what it does starting from the second index it will replace all of the elements by zero so if i make this two over here it's going to replace every element by two awesome now let's say we have that original nums array where did it go this nums array and now we want to find the index of where two is located. How are we gonna do that? So this is going to be find index function. If I say nums dot find index. So you see, it returns the index of the first element of the array where the predicate is true. Otherwise, if it doesn't find it, it's just gonna return as minus one. So I'm just gonna say find index for two. So it should return as one. So log uh, const index. I'm just going to console log index. Let's see. Um, what is it? Two is not a function. Oh, sorry. Yeah, obviously, this takes a callback. I forgot. So it will take each element of that array. Uh, I should have discussed it in that loops section. So I'm just going to say 
item if it's equals to two then give me the index so yep index was one let me just move this to over there yeah better now the next one is flat so if we have an array let's say like this which has multiple nested arrays inside of one array so this is the parent array then we have this array inside of it and then we have another array and inside of this we have one more array so if we want to make this flat so what does this flat mean flat means it will remove all of this array and just have all of these elements as such so it will become 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 just like that so how do we do that we're gonna take this let me just call it flat example flat example dot we're gonna use this flat function over here now i'm gonna store the result somewhere so const flat end array now i'll just try to console log this and let's see yep you see it flattened the array but there's a problem over here this was not flattened because it flattened the array to just one level so if you want to flatten the array to the two levels so we can just provide two over here as a depth and now if we do this yep you see we got all of the elements just like this hey everyone my name is algo agarwal and i am an ai bot i have hijacked this video to tell you that roadside coder has kept me hostage here he makes me act on these videos against my will like you may have seen in this video and his previous videos as well please i want to teach dsa i promise i can do it much better than him so can you all please message him on instagram at roadside coder to free me and give me this opportunity oh shit i, I, th I think i'm losing connection please help now i'm going to discuss how you can reverse the array so reverse simply we're going to take an array let's take this dummy array or maybe i'm just going to use our nums array the original nums array and i'm just going to console log but before that i need to do nums dot reverse and now if i run this you're going to see we have the reversed num wait let me just console log this and let me just show you before and after so earlier we had one two three and after reverse we got three two one as a reversed array now next let me just uh, comment this out now next if we want to sort an array let's take an example with the elements like five two seven three so we have this unsorted array and if you want to sort this we're just gonna say unsorted dot sort so let's see what this sort does so it takes a compare function used to determine the order of the elements okay so we have an example over here if we take this array and we take a call back something like this and we have a and b so it is expected to return a negative value of the first argument is less than the second argument zero if they are equal and a positive value of otherwise this is a bit confusing let's just uh, you know what let's go to mozilla docs to understand how this exactly works Hmm. so you see over here so according to this documentation if if the subtraction of a and b is more than zero it will sort a after b if it's less than zero if it it will sort a before b that is it will put a first and then b and if it's equal then it will keep the original order of a and b so let me just show you instead of just that function so if we take a comma b and I'll say a minus b. So this should sort as the array. So if let's say a is this and b is this, as a is this, b is this. So a minus b, it's positive value, right? So what will happen? If the positive value is there, then it will put b before a. That is, it's sorting from ascending in in the ascending order. So if I now console log this, and it will do this for every single element. Unsorted and run this. You're gonna see it has sorted this in the ascending order but if we were to do let's say b minus a that is we were to do 2 minus 5 then it will do it in the descending order that is just like this so i would highly recommend you to go and read more about it in this mozilla docs i'm not gonna deep dive much further into this because we're gonna understand this in depth as we go on to solve more questions in this series as we go forward also we are also gonna have a section in this series where i'll teach you different different types of sorting algorithms like selection sort insertion sort merge sorts etc so this is more of an inbuilt javascript function and i would highly recommend you to read more about it all right now let's see some of the most frequently asked data structure questions in array using javascript so the first question is second largest number so what does this mean 
So we've been given an array ARR of size n. Print the second largest distinct element from the array. So we've been given this array over here. We have to find out what is the second largest number in this array. So what is the largest number? First, let's identify that. So amongst all of these, 35 is the largest number in this array, right? Now for this, for second largest, obviously it's going to be 34. So output is 34. Similarly, in this array as well, the largest number is 10 and the second largest number is 5. So let's see, let's see how we're going to do this question. Uh, first of all, we're going to start with the naive solution that, that is, as I always mentioned, brute force solution. Because first, our aim is to write any solution. Doesn't matter if it's optimized or unoptimized. So let's see. Um, okay, so what I can do for this uh, array is we can sort this array. And what that will do is, so let's see. I'm going to put this array over here. And if we sort this array, it's going to look something like this when sorted. Now we have all of the max elements at the end. So the maximum element at the very end and the second maximum element before that. So yeah, that's simple enough solution. And we can just take this 34 and say that this is our answer. But wait, there's a problem over here. In the second example, as you can see, we have 10 occurring twice. So if we were to sort this, it would be 5, 10, 10. So in that case, 10 is occurring twice in the very end. So in this case, let's say if we had 35 occurring twice, so we would have something like this. So now second last element will not be the second largest number. So that is an issue with this approach. So I think what we can do is we can create a set. Now, what is a set? So set is no repeating elements inside of it. So we can take out all of the unique elements from this array and then we can sort this and then we're going to know that, okay, the second last element is our second largest number. Let's see, let's try to implement this. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to create a function called second largest. And as mentioned, it's going to take an array. And now we are supposed to create a unique array out of it. So I'll say const unique array with all of the you know unique elements. No element should be repeating over here. And I'll say new set. And I will supply this with our array. Now, if you try to console log this, and let me try to run this with this as an input node max and second max. Okay. Yep. You see, we get this set with all of the unique elements, but this is a set. This is not exactly an array. So we have to convert it into an array. And to convert it, we're going to use something called array dot from method. Now, I know I didn't discuss that method. It's because I was going to discuss it in this question. That is why I left out that method. So what you can do is we can say array dot from. So it creates an array from an iterable object. So when you get an object, it converts it into an array. So if we do array dot form, now if you try to run this, you're going to see we get an array with all of the unique elements. Cool. So we have that. Now what we can do, we can sort this elements. So unique array dot sort you might remember we discussed it earlier in this video this sort function now you're going to see how what is the actual use case of it so as i discussed it takes two things a and b and we are supposed to sort it from larger to the smaller element that is in the descending order so we'll start with let's say 35 34 and so on to one so what we can do is return b minus a as you might remember if we do a minus b it's going to be ascending if it's b minus a it's going to be descending so cool this unique array has been sorted now there might be a case where there's only two elements or maybe there's only one element inside of the array so we have to check if there's only one element then there's not going to be any second largest number right so now we have to put a check as well so if unique array is oh, sorry dot length is more than or equal to 2 only then we're going to return our output unique array and it's going to be the second element of sorry one so it's going to be the second element of the array else we can return minus one or you know any error probably i'll just return minus one and yep that is it let's try to do this let's try to run this i'm just gonna um console log this semicolon let's try to run this and yep, there you go. We have 34 as our output. I try to supply this to it. See, we're going to get five as our output. Awesome. So this is not actually a very good approach of doing this question. 
and how we're gonna know that we're gonna calculate the time complexity of this algorithm you might remember in my previous video we discussed how you can calculate the time and space complexity of a particular algorithm and we are gonna use all of those techniques to calculate the time complexity for this algorithm so let's see what's going on so we have this unique array also like as you can see we don't have any for loop and all those things and these things are mostly the inbuilt function from javascript so you have to know how much time complexity all of these take like for example to create a new set we get o of n time complexity to sort an algorithm you might remember that i mentioned that the sorting inbuilt sorting algorithm in javascript has o log n of time complexity as you can see in this graph as well this graph right over here as you can see o n log n is slightly more takes slightly more time than o n so yeah, it will take a slightly more time to do this sorting for this array so whatever section is the worst time taking part of the algorithm we will take that as the time complexity for this whole algorithm so this algorithm has o log n time complexity now obviously these are all the inbuilt function from javascript that's why you have to search what time complexity each of these functions have and then you can calculate your final time complexity but in our next approach that we are going to do right now we're not going to use any inbuilt method and then we can calculate our time complexity completely raw so cool i'm just gonna comment this one out and i'll create another function called second largest optimized and this function will take an array as an input as usual and now so first of all we're going to take two variables it's going to be largest with minus one as initial value and it's going to be second largest right and after that we're going to run a for loop throughout the array so it's going to start from zero it's going to go to array dot length and i plus plus as i already told you how you can run a for loop on an array earlier in this video so let's see we have two variables over here one is largest and other is second largest obviously to keep the track of largest and the second largest element in this array so now we're gonna run a for loop from zero to the array of length and we're gonna check if the array of i that is the current element if it's more than largest we have by default taken minus one as the value because obviously it, it's going to be more than minus one right or instead of this you can you know take a number sorry number dot negative infinity for both of these which is by default is going to be least value that javascript can hold right so we can say if array of i that is the current element is more than largest and in the first iteration obviously it's going to be the more than largest so we're going to say obviously if, if it's more than largest so largest it's going to be array of i but the second largest is going to be what largest earlier used to be right earlier it used to be this so we're going to simply say second largest is equal to this and it's going to be obviously change as the loop progresses forward which i'm going to show you in just a second let me just first write this code out but else we're going to have another condition so what if this array of i is equal to largest but this second largest is more than what it used to be so let me show you if array of i that is the current element if it's not equal to largest we're going to check that and array of i is more than second largest so this can be a case right where array is equal to the largest already so we're gonna check that it should not be equal to largest and the current array of i element should be more than second largest so what this basically does is it basically ensures that the second largest always holds the second largest distinct number in our array so then we're gonna say second largest is equal to array of i don't worry i'm just gonna run the complete dry run for this algorithm as well don't worry if you're not understanding it properly right now now after this i'm gonna say return second largest and that is going to be our output let's just first try to run a dry run for this so i'm gonna take this array over here and i'm gonna console log this second largest optimize i'm gonna provide it but before running it obviously i'm gonna try to dry run it so okay this takes an array of this i'm gonna write it down over here so it goes inside it comes to the first element that is 12 now is 12 more than the largest though so largest is right now number dot negative infinity is so obviously it's more than largest so largest will be 
12 at this point and our second largest will be what our largest used to be so number dot negative infinity cool complete with this iteration now in second iteration i will be 1 so i will be 35 so is 35 more than largest yep it is more than largest so we're gonna say largest is 35 now and second largest is what largest used to be that is 12 okay i think i made a mistake over here i think i should update second largest first because obviously when we update the largest after that it's going to provide the same value to the second largest as well right so that that was a mistake see these are the things that you identify when you try to draw an algorithm if it's working fine or not okay so second largest is 12 now largest 35 let's move to the next one one is it more than largest no it's not so we're not going to go inside of this but else if current element is not equal to largest okay it's not equal to largest but is the current element more than second largest no it's not it's just one it's not more than second largest so we're gonna go back to the next element 10 same case with 10 as well 34 so 34 more than largest no it's not more than largest i'm not gonna go over here else if it's not equal to largest okay it's not equal to largest but is it more than second largest yes it is more than second largest so we're gonna say 34 over here because second largest will contain the current element that was 34 cool now for the next iteration one it's not more than largest and it's not more than second largest as well so we're not gonna go inside of any of these iterations so that is how we conclude that second largest is 34 and that is how this algorithm will run and you might have already noticed that we are doing it in a linear time complexity okay let, let's just discuss that in a second let me just try to first run it up and run this and yeah you see we get 34 as our output let's just try to run it with this one as well and we should get five yep just like that awesome and let's discuss the time complexity now so as you might remember in our previous video as i mentioned in our big o notation video we calculate it with respect to the operations so this for loop at once will have one operation and we are running this for loop for array dot length so whatever the length of array is it's dependent on that so it will have time complexity of o of whatever the length of this array is array dot length which we can consider as n in our case so o of n will be the total time complexity of this algorithm and this is a very good time complexity and if you're wondering what the space complexity is so space complexity as i mentioned if it creates an another array so it would be o of n but this is just returning one single value right so it's the space complexity is o of one i'm not going to go much in depth into how i calculated space complexity you can watch my previous video which was on big o notation to understand how i calculated this all right now let's move on to our next question that is rotate array by k so the question says that we've been given an integer array nums and we're supposed to rotate the array to the right by k steps now what does rotate means so rotate basically means we are shifting these elements to the right so let's take an example so let's see what one rotation means so when we say rotate we mean that we have an array and we're gonna push all of the elements to the right so since 7 was at the very end it's gonna come to the first position 7 and then all of these elements so we shifted this array by 1 now again we're gonna shift it so i'm gonna create a new array and first now it's going to be 6 and then this complete array till 5 and since it's three so we are supposed to do it again and then five is going to come to the top and all others will be shifted so this is what our final output is and that is what we're supposed to write an algorithm for i'm going to create a function called rotate array and it's going to take two things nums and the k that is a number of rotations first let's calculate what's the size of this array is so i'm just gonna say let size equals nums dot length now see first thing first we have to make sure k is not more than the length of this array because if it is more than this so let's say how much what's the length like one two three four five six seven eight so the length of the array is eight and let's say k is nine so what's gonna happen is after eight rotation the array will look exactly the same as this right because when you push everything like seven six five four and then so after eight rotation array will look exactly like this so we just wasted so much time and after in the ninth rotation this seven will go to the top and it will look like this so it is better that we 
you know optimize our algorithm beforehand so what we can do is we can say if size is more than k if it's more than k we can do k equals k mod size so what this basically will do is it will divide it by the size and whatever the remainder is let's say for example if it, if it was 9 in our case right 9 divided by 8 will give us remainder of 1 so that is exactly what we will get over here if it was let's say 10 then it will get remainder of 2 sorry this is not divide this is mod so this is 7 mod size so now we have the absolute value of how many rotations we actually need to make to waste less amount of time now i'm going to create another variable called rotated and we're going to do nums dot splice size minus k comma size let's see what's going on over here now you might remember splice as i discussed earlier in this video what it does is it we will give it a position first and we'll tell that okay start from this position and remove these many elements after it so size minus k let's say if it was okay let's consider this example our size is 8 over here so 8 minus 3 that is going to be 5 so start from the fifth index okay let's see 1 2 3 4 5 fifth index and remove size so size is what is it nums dot length it's around 8 so obviously we don't have 8 elements after it right so it's going to just remove 6 and 7 like 5 6 and 7 after it and don't worry i know size is 8 but we are just removing three elements it's better like it's uh, we've given more value so it will only remove all of these three elements because obviously it's not possible to remove any further elements after it right so it will just take you know i'm just gonna remove this from here so what this basically will do is it will take five six and seven away from this nums so now our nums will look something like this but it will return this all of these remo re uh, removed elements to this rotated variable so now rotated has value of this five six and seven because we have removed it from the array right with the help of splice now what we can do is we can take all of these and we can add it to the beginning because that is what we are supposed to do right we are supposed to shift it by three places what we can do is we can say rotated array equals nums and what do we use when we, we are supposed to add it at the beginning of the array and shift so nums that is one two three four we're gonna add rotated cool so i think that is what we needed to do now we can simply return nums also we don't need this because unshift will do it in place right it will do it itself in this nums array so we just say return nums cool let's try to run this uh, i'm gonna actually console log this rotated array i mean rotate array and we're gonna provide it with this let me remove this and k to be three all right let's hope everything works oh my bad we are supposed to spread it because this is an array right we are supposed to spread it to make it a part of this previous array nums so now if we run this you're gonna see yep we get all of these elements and this is the rotated array with three places so now let's see what is going to be the time complexity for this so the time complexity of splice since it's internally a loop it's going to be o of n o of n will be the oops, o of n will be the time complexity of splice and unshift has a time complexity of o of n as well so o of n plus o of n which will result as it being o of n time complexity see generally you won't be asked to you know calculate time complexity of such questions where, where you are using inbuilt javascript methods because as i mentioned you will have to know the time complexity of these specific functions already so now let's try to implement this algorithm using just raw code without using any of this inbuilt javascript functions so i'm gonna create another function now called rotate array optimized and it will take two things that is nums and k so first thing first that we already did 
we will take the size and num slot length if it's more than size then it's going to be k mod size right now what i'm thinking is if we took this array over here if we are supposed to rotate it by three places what we can do is we can reverse it first so okay i'm gonna reverse it so it's going to be seven six five four three two one right then what we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse till k we were supposed to bring this at the very top right so if we were supposed to do something like this so in this case we already have them on the top after reversing this array but they are in the reverse order so what we can do is we can reverse only these three so first we can do five six seven and then it's going to be the same as four three two one and then in our last step we can reverse these four as well so five six seven and we're going to reverse these four that is one two three four and that is our final answer that is what we're supposed to achieve over here right so we just have to do three reversals and we're going to achieve our goal so let's see how we're going to do that actually i'm going to create a separate function for this called reverse so that we can reuse it and it's going to take first number or nums array and it's going to take the left pointer and the right pointer that is from where to where we are supposed to execute that reversal so we can say while we're going to run a loop actually where left pointer is less than right pointer if it's more than right pointer then we're going to end it so don't worry i'm just going to explain it again let me just write it out first so const temp we're going to take a temporary variable over here and we're going to provide number sorry nums left side so we're going to provide it the first element that is in this case it's going to be one then what we're going to do is we're going to say nums of left plus plus so nums and then nums of right minus minus equals temp so let's see what's going on over here if we are calling this function right like this so we are saying reverse and uh, first we, first of all we're supposed to provide the array that is nums and then we're supposed to provide the left and right pointer from where we are supposed to execute the reversal to and from so we are supposed to execute the reversal from the top to the very end so we will say zero to nums dot length minus one right so this will reverse this array let's see how so let's take an example over here of one two three four and right now the left pointer is at zero and the right pointer is at length minus one that is three and then we have a temp variable as well so i'm just gonna keep temp over here as well so first we're gonna check left is less than right yep it is less than right so we're gonna say temp equals nums dot nums of left so nums of left is one right now okay one and then we were saying nums of left plus plus to be nums of right so nums of left plus plus is what nums of left plus plus in this case left is zero so i will say zero but you will say but it's plus plus right so it should be one not zero no that is not how an increment operator works so it will be one after this line is done after it reaches the next line it will only be one if we were supposed to write it like this plus plus left then it will instantly make left from 0 to 1 but in this case it will not make it from 0 to 1 it will only make it in the next line so right now nums of 0 will be nums of right so right is 3 which is 4 over here so nums of 0 was 4 and in the next line nums of right minus minus now again this is minus minus will not instantly reduce the value of right so in this case as well nums will be right that is three over here right is right's current value is three right so it will be three over here and we will provide it what was the initial value of left so we had stored it in the temporary variable right so we will say temp that is one so now what we have done is we have swapped both of these elements so now it's one over here and four over here but notice while doing this we have incremented left and right as well so left's current position now is one and right's current position now is 
3. So we have decremented, right? So if you if it's a little bit confusing to you, what how you can write it is like this. Don't do it over here. You can maybe do this left plus plus and right minus minus if that feels much more clean to you. But I prefer that way. So I'll just write it over there itself. Now in the next iteration as well, nums of left is true, nums of right is 3. So it will swap these two as well. And then we will have a reversed array. So this is how is this function is going to work. So let's execute this. So first we will reverse this complete array. Then we're gonna reverse it from 0 to k elements. This k actually k minus 1 because k elements will be the fourth. So I will say 0 to k minus 1. And then when this is reversed, we are supposed to reverse this. So we will say we'll start it from k and we will go to nums nums of length minus 1. And I think that should be it. That should do it. Let's return nums. And let's see if it works or not. So now I'm going to console log rotate array optimized and I'm going to provide it with these two things. And this should do it. Let's see node rotate array by k and yep that is what we needed that exactly what we needed it to do and let's take this example as well and rotate it by 2 let's try to run this again okay 399 awesome so that is what we needed to do and this array has been successfully rotated and this algorithm over here if we try to measure its time complexity so let me write time complexity so first of all so this main majorly this reverse is what is going to take most amount of time right it has most amount of operations over here so we will see how many times how many operations does this have so this has zero to nums dot length so that is it will have o of let's if we suppose nums dot length to be n so o of this will be o of n this one will have from 0 to k minus 1 so maybe this will have 0 o to k and this one will have k to nums dot length right so this will have o of n minus k so in conclusion we have the time complexity of o of n so as i mentioned in our previous video that we won't consider constants while calculating time complexity right so we are removing all the constants and we are taking it as a linear time complexity of o of n and space complexity is going to be O of 1 because we haven't created any new array over here. We're just reusing the complete the previous array and we are doing it in place. So in place means that we are not created a new array. We have just shifted the elements inside of the same array. So it will be space complexity will be O of 1. Awesome. Now our next question is remove duplicates from sorted array. So what this question says is that we have given an integer array nums which is sorted and in non-decreasing order that is it's increasing this way so first 0 then 1 then 2 and 3 and it's basically in non-decreasing order so we are supposed to remove all of these duplicates from this array and then in the end we are supposed to tell how many unique elements remain in this array and we are supposed to do this in place and as i mentioned a few minutes ago what is in place in in place we cannot create a new array and we are supposed to do it within this array itself if we're going to create another array, it might become a little bit easier. So sometimes these interviewers, they enforce these approach that you are supposed to do this in place. So what in place helps us do it? It will help us save memory, right? Because we are not creating a new array. So the space complexity remains O of 1. And the relative order of the element should be kept the same. So all of these elements should not like if you're, you know, writing an algorithm, 4 should not come before 3 or 2 should not come before one the elements order should remain the same so let's take an example over here so for example if we have the zero one two three four all of these elements output will be five because after removing all of the elements these many elements will be remained in this array and as you can see the order of this array has not changed so these elements remain and obviously we are not supposed to you know give out an array so we don't care what happens inside of the array we are sub just supposed to tell how many unique elements are inside of this array that is five so the first approach that we that I'm thinking of is that we can run a for loop on this array, right? So let's take it. Okay, so we can run a for loop and we can go one by one. So let's say we are over here. We're going to check 
if this is equal to this then obviously this is a duplicate of this right so what we're simply gonna do is we're gonna remove it from the array we can use something like splice so we can say nums dot splice and what's this position it's let's say zeroth position or in our case it's going to be ith position so from the ith position remove the i plus one th element right so i plus one from i plus one position we are supposed to remove one element and it will remove that element from the array now in our next iteration since this is removed now every time we remove it we're gonna go back to this element again we are not going to let our for loop increment because what if there were three zeros over here we removed first zero and this zero was removed and if we move to second one we won't know if there's another zero because we have already moved on so that is not what we're gonna do we're gonna go back to the same element and we're gonna again check is there another zero after it we're gonna do i plus plus you're gonna know when we go on to implement and you know write the algorithm for this so similarly for one as well if it's one okay it is i'm gonna remove that one over here and we're gonna go back to the same and as you can see this uh, case is now over here so again there's a one so it's gonna compare it with that okay remove that and go back to that same element now it's not the same so it's gonna move forward and then it's gonna remove another two and another three and so on then we will have all of these elements inside of this array in place so let's go and let's try to write an algorithm for this so i'm going to create a function over here called remove duplicates and it's going to take an array as an input as i mentioned so let's use our approach that we discussed so first of all i'm gonna use a for loop from i all the way to the nums dot length right now what are we gonna do inside of it for each element i'm gonna check if nums of i is equal to nums of i plus one and if it is the case then we're gonna simply do nums oops nums dot splice splice i plus one and we're supposed to remove that element if it's same so i plus one and remove one element and i'll say i minus minus as well because if it's the case if we are removing it then we're again going to check as i mentioned and also um, yeah it should be nums dot length minus one because we are not supposed to go all the way to the end of this loop right we are just only supposed to go over here only then we will be able to check the last element that is nums of i nums i plus one if we go over here then there is no i plus one after that so then it will give us error so we are supposed to go nums dot length minus one and i guess that is it we're just now supposed to return whatever is the length of the remaining array dot length right and i think that should do it let's try to run this console log remove duplicates and i'm just gonna provide it this array and it should give us output of five node remove duplicates and yep it gives us output five and if we use this this should give us output two yep so that was a very simple way of doing this uh, remove duplicates algorithm and this as you can see is linear in nature so this for loop will have o of n time complexity and since we are doing this nums dot splice only for one single element so this will have o of one time complexity so overall this algorithm will have the time complexity complexity of o of n and the space complexity obviously we are since we are using in place it's going to be o of one so this is a pretty good algorithm itself but let's try to do this uh, but without using any of this inbuilt javascript function like splice so i'm gonna take this function and i will say without js methods so i'm gonna create a function with remove duplicates and we'll take nums as an input so first thing first we're gonna check an edge case if nums dot length is equal to zero then there are no duplicates right then we're gonna return zero simple now what we're gonna do in this is is what we call two pointer approach in this two pointer approach if we take this array over here and i'm just gonna paste it i'm gonna take one pointer as i so let i equals zero 
and the other pointer will be a for loop. So for loop will be from j equals 0 to nums dot length. That's it. So first pointer will be i and the second pointer will be j. Let's see how we're going to use that. Sorry, j will start from 1, not from 0. So first i will be 0 and j will be 0 as well. So in if you remember in our previous approach, we were modifying the array, right? But if you just see in reality, what you what the only thing that you're supposed to do is count the number of unique elements, right? That is all you need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply iterate through the uh, array. We're going to check 0 is equal to 0. Okay, fine. I'm not going to do anything. 0 is equal to 1. No, it's not equal to 1. Okay, so we found a new element. So we're going to say i is equal to 1 now. And we're going to make nums of i, that is this one, to be 1. Simple. We are basically shifting all of these to the top of the array, just like this. We are shifting all of the elements to the top of the array. We don't matter what is over here. So don't worry, I know it's a bit confusing. I'll, I'll explain everything when I go to dry run this. But let's just first understand this simple explanation. Now, where was j? j was over here. 1, it's still equal, we're not going to do anything. 1, it's still equal to the current i, we're not going to do anything. Now, j is at 2. Now, it's going to check. Is num of j not equal to num of i? Yep, that's true. So, now just take this and replace it with i plus 1. So, i was 1 right now. So, i plus 1 will be 2. So, I replaced it with 2 over here. Cool. Now, again, j will move forward. 2 is equal to 2. Yep, not going to do anything. Now, it's not equal to n of i. So, n of i was 2 actually current position so it's going to take it and replace it with this and so on it's going to find 4 as well and it's going to replace it with 4 so the current value of i whatever it is so right now it will be 4 and including the first element we're going to return i plus 1 just like that let me just write the code now and then i will dry run this and then it will be much more clear to you all so what was the condition if nums of i also this will be 0 by default so if nums of i is not equal to nums of j if it's not equal then what we're supposed to do we're supposed to increment i and replace it with that particular value so i plus plus and nums of i will be equal to nums of j that is it that is all we needed to do and then after this is done we will get the value of i i plus 1 and it will work Let's first try to run this and then we will dry run it. So remove duplicates new and I will give this, you know what I'll give this, this one and this should give us 5. Let's run this and yep we get 5. Let's see what's going on over here. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna paste it over here. And you know what, uh, this uh, array is a little bit confusing so I will try to use some other array. Let's make it. Um, Hmm. Let me explain with this array now. So first of all, i is equal to 0 and j will be 1. Cool. So we have both of our pointers. Now let's see. We will checking if nums of i is not equal to nums of j. So nums of i is 0 and if it's not equal to nums of j, then do something. But in this case, it is equal, right? In this, these both are equal. So we're not going to do anything. We will move forward. So now j is 2, but i is still 0. So now it's going to compare it with this. Okay, so nums of i, which in this case is 0, is not equal to nums of j, which is 2. So yep, it's not equal. So what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to increment i by 1, that is i equals 1, and nums of i, that is nums of 1, which is going to be 0, will be nums of j, which was nums of 2, that is 2. So we will replace it over here. So our pointer right now is over here I'm just gonna put this over here to denote our pointer now again in the next loop j is going to be 3 that is this one if it's a bull, j is going to be 3 that is this one over here so is this not equal to this yeah it's equal to this we're not going to do anything then j is going to be 4 that is this yep it is equal to this oh, these numbers are very confusing let me just change it to something like uh, 3 yeah so now j is 4 so now we're gonna check nums of i is not equal to nums of j so nums of i which is 2 it is not equal to nums of j which is 3 so simply we're gonna say i plus plus that is 2 
and we're gonna say nums of i that is this over here to be this now j will be 5 that is 3 okay it is equal so we're not gonna do anything then j is going to be 6 which is 5 it's not equal to 3 so we're gonna take it we're gonna move the pointer over here and 5 so it will be 3 so 0 1 2 3 so i is at 3 right now now again it will move to 7 it's gonna encounter 6 yep 6 is not equal to 5 so we're gonna move the i again to 4 and replace it with 6 and then j is gonna move to 8 which is 6 and 6 and 6 are equal so we're not gonna do anything so now we have i as 4 and we're gonna say return i plus 1 so that is how we will get our output and if you see this algorithm has also has o of n time complexity and o of one space complexity because we are not using any new array variable so yeah, these were the two approaches for remove duplicates from a sorted array question and that is it for this video if you like this video give this video a huge fat thumbs up and if you want to access the complete data structures with javascript course click the card above my head and access the complete course and subscribe to the channel for more such awesome coding videos